Namaste. Welcome to this short practice for chair yogis, but applicable to everybody, um, of strengthening postures for the core and the legs. So there was a previous short video on working on strength for the upper body. And so today we're just going to focus on basically from the chest downwards, mostly at least. So start with a little warm up if you're not warm already, stepping your feet nice and wide apart, soft in your knees, feeling that lift from the pelvic floor to the crown of the head, and then gently, gently twisting side to side. And Kati Chakrasana on its own is really quite toning for the waist, although we do it to release tension from the body in all different places. Let your arms and shoulders be nice and loose, soft. And just wrapping the body, tapping the body wherever they fall. If you have a sensitive low back or if you know it suits you better, you can pivot on your toes from the get go. But if you want to join in pivoting on your toes now, you can a little equally. If you prefer having your feet steady on the floor, just leave them in place. If you wish to, you can add a little light bounce in the knees. Bounce and twist, bounce and twist. And this is a great way to warm up some of those uh, larger muscle groups across the legs. And the buttocks a little bit too. And also let go of any holding patterns through the center of the body. When you're ready, just allow your feet to come to steadiness and sway back to center. And we will just gently roll the shoulders a few times in each direction because we will use the arms, but just not weight bearing on the arms. So rolling the opposite way when you're ready. That's great. So other things you could do to warm up would be to use your balls on the soles of your feet for some fascial release. Um, to do some work with the toes, the feet, the ankles, um, and feel free to add those to this practice to make it a little bit longer if you'd like to. But when you're ready, coming to uh, standing with your chair, or if you can, a chair and a wall on each side. And we're just going to begin with floating up onto tiptoes and floating the heels down. You can do this facing onto your chair as well. You don't need to do it sideways floating up, floating down, whatever works for you. Here, you're looking for that sense of inner lift, still engaging in the belly muscles. For those who feel that you're able to, you can lift one arm and then swap to lift the other. Or if you like, you can lift both. And the more you lift, the higher your arms go. So it could just be to here or it could be all the way over the head. The more challenging it is, the higher up you go. So when you've done a few of these, you might feel those muscles in your calves, the back of the calves really switch it, switching on. So just giving your knees a few bends and then shaking out your legs. Very good. And also standing front or back onto your chair, you can do a little bit of toe tapping here. And that has the same effect, uh, but on the muscles in the front of the lower leg across the shin. And again, after you do have done a little while, just giving your knees a bend, shaking out your legs. Very good. Okay. So we're going to uh, do a little bit of leg swinging. And that's why a wall is useful. So you've got something on both sides. But if you feel comfortable just with one side, that's okay. We're going to swing the outside leg. So stand with your, uh, your body nice and tall. Take your weight onto the leg, in this case, the right leg closest to the chair, and then gently swinging the left leg. And the idea as you swing is to, to make the movement come from the hip downwards. You can flex your foot, point your toe if you want to move in the ankle as well. So you need to stabilize with your belly muscles and you'll find that the muscles in the low back and the back of the legs, the buttocks are also switched on. Just a little bit of swinging backwards and forwards. 
And then when you're ready, you can gently bring your feet back together. Standing on both feet, you'll notice the work that your standing leg, your right leg did in that exercise. And then sticking with this same leg, the left leg being the moving leg, we're going to lift the knee, left knee in front and place the foot down and then press off that foot to step back to center. Lift the knee, step the left foot out, lift that knee and step back to center and then lift the knee, step your leg back, press off your foot to step back to center. And we'll do that two more times in each direction. So lifting and stepping forward, nice big gestures, lifting and stepping back, lifting and stepping out, use your chair if you need to and step back, lifting and stepping behind and lift to step back to center. One more time, lift and step forward, nice and firm in the belly, step back, lift and step out, lift and step back, Lift and step behind you, lift and step to center. Very good. Take a moment to notice the difference between the two sides of the body. And we'll do one more thing with uh, this left leg. So we're going to point the left toes forwards and keeping that really good lift and activity through the belly muscles, just drawing your toe in a circle around. If you can, crossing over behind you and in front. And it doesn't matter how big of a circle you're making, your legs don't need to be absolutely straight. If you would like to, you can reach your arm away from you and that will further increase the uh, efforts that you need to make in your center, help to counterbalance a little bit. I've got no idea how many we've done. Let's do one more. And when you're ready, stepping your legs back to center, just relaxing your arm down, noticing the difference between the two sides of the body. And this is a really good time for a downward facing dog. So turning towards your seat, walking your feet away from your chair, pressing your hands down, extending through the butt, buttocks, the tailbone, and maybe gently just swaying the hips from side to side or lengthening one leg and then the other, keeping that gentle lift, pressing down with the arms. When you're ready, you can come to center, look towards your seat, walk yourself forward. I'm going to change my uh, chair back to the opposite side, but you might like to just turn yourself around. And then we're prepared to work to the other side. So now we have the left foot with, as our standing leg, the chair and or wall on the left side, standing nice and tall, feeling that lift, and just beginning with a little swinging. As you swing, you might just feel happy to swing, but if you want to, you can point your foot in front and flex your heel back. And as you swing, we're trying to keep the body lifted. So the motion comes from uh, below the hip, if I, or from the hip, sorry. So if I turn sideways, you can see that the upper body is remaining nice and tall. There's not a lot of counterbalancing because I'm resisting that movement with my core muscles. So they're switched on to keep the upper body nice and upright. Very good. When you're ready, you can bring yourself uh, back to center. Just notice the difference between the two sides. And then we'll do our big steps. We're doing three sets. So again, the left leg is the standing leg, lifting the right knee, stepping forward, and then just using that right foot to lift and step back to center. Lifting your knee, stepping out to the side and stepping back to center. Lift your knee, step behind you and step back to center. Nice and firm in the belly. Lift, step forward. Big gestures, lift, step back. Lift, step out to the side. Lift, step back. Lift, step behind you. Lift, step to center. Lift, step forward, lift, step to center, lift, step to the side, lift, step to center, lift, step behind, and lift, step to center. Take a moment just to observe the two sides of the body. Make sure that you're not too fatigued. 
We want to make sure that as we practice, it's just enough, not too much. And then when you're ready, if you wish to join in the next exercise as well, pointing your right toes forward, drawing a nice big circle around the body with the right foot and back in front of the body. If you can, crossing the leg behind you and in front, but do what range of movement comes naturally. And we're still resisting the temptation to fold forward or to lean away from the legs it moves by using the core muscles through the belly, through the buttocks, through the back of the body. Very good. Very nice. And we'll do just one more. Why not? Stepping back into the center. So there are lots of different things that you can do for your legs. We've done lots of different leg strengthening exercises in our practice in class. But these are just uh, a few nice little ones to try. So we're going to do another downward facing dog and we're going to use down dog to, to further do a little bit of extra, extra strengthening practice. So make sure you've got room behind you as you come into your downward facing dog with your chair and your feet relatively close together. Lifting in the belly muscles, having that length behind you with the tailbone, pressing down into the hands. And here you can step your uh, left foot back and just gently lift and lower that left leg three times, if that feels okay. And it might be that you just slide your foot in and out from the center. That is enough as well. When you're ready, you can swap sides, taking the weight onto the left leg, sliding the right foot back. And as I say, you can just slide your toes in and out if that feels good. Or if you can, lift and lower, nice and firm in the belly. You don't have to straighten your standing leg. You can keep it a little soft as well. When you're ready, you can slide the right foot in, press into your hands, look towards your hands, walk up to an upright position, and in your upright position, perhaps taking a cleansing breath here. Breathing in, reaching out and up. And breathing out, drawing the hands down to the center of the chest. Very good. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit more from for our um, tummy area, if you like. And um, so lots of what we've done has worked actually the back of the body a little bit more than the front or perhaps you felt the effort is there a little bit more than the front. And we're going to do something that draws the, uh, the front of the body into more of an action. So I'm going to place my chair a little bit to the right of me so that I can rest easily my right hand on it, but my left arm and leg can easily move in front of the space where the chair is. And I'm going to begin by lifting my left arm up and sliding the left leg back. And then I'm going to bring my left hand to my left knee in front of my body and then step back into this more open position. So left hand to left knee and then lengthening, left hand to left knee and lengthening at the same time, keeping the body nice and upright and trying to use those core muscles the muscles in front of the body, drawing the navel towards the spine, last one, and lengthen, and then release back to center. And standing on one leg is always good practice. It's always strengthening for the leg that is the standing leg. And in this case, we're using that stabilizing to as a, an increased bonus for our practice while we work the side that we're moving. So we're going to uh, do something standing on the left leg now. We still want that little space in front of us. So uh, right hand stays on the chair. We're going to lengthen the right foot out to the right and the left arm out to the left. Standing tall here, breathing in. As you breathe out, bring your hand towards your knee in front of your body and then breathe in. And if you want to, you can bring your elbow towards your knee, breathing in. Breathing out can be hand, breathing in, it can be elbow, breathing out. Breathing in, we'll do just one more. And then finish in this nice open position, float your left arm down to your side, 
stand on both legs. If you need to, just give yourself a march in place that can sometimes even up the effort through your hips, but you can always try some dancing shoulders and some wiggly hips that can let go of some of your tension as well, if you have it after practice. And with all of these strength postures um, and strengthening practices, if you do a little bit often, you'll find that you get an increase of confidence in the strength that you have and a marked increase in your strength, but it takes time to progress. So just keep doing a little bit often. That's the way. Okay. So when I was swapping to the other side, the left leg is the standing leg, left hand on the chair, plenty of room for the right leg and arm to move in front of you. We we'll start by lengthening the right foot behind and the right arm in front, that lift through the center of the body, breathing in here and breathing out, bringing your hand to your knee in front of your body, breathing in, see if you can lengthen, your arm can be out to the side, but lengthen back behind the body if you can with that lift, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out, hand to knee, breathing in, breathing out, hand to knee, breathing in, and breathing out. I think we did six on the other side, so we'll do one more, breathing out, stepping onto both feet. Oh, should have started, ended here, never mind. Stepping onto both feet, it won't much matter. Just observing here and then preparing for our cross the body work. So taking the right leg as the standing leg, sliding your left toes out to the left, reaching your right arm out to the right, breathing in here. And as you breathe out, cross the left knee towards the right hand, breathing in. Could be elbow to knee as you breathe out. Breathing in, breathing out hand or elbow. Breathing in, nice and strong in the tummy, breathing out. Last one, breathing in, breathing out, and then stand onto both feet, lengthening your arms down, giving yourself a little bit of a shoulder roll, maybe a shake out in the legs. And we're going to also breathe in, take the arms out and up, breathing out, bringing the hands down through the center of the chest. So in addition to the other practices that we do with our wiggling of hips and ribs, this can be a really nice way to just give yourself that sense of inner strength, of drawing your strength into center as well. I hope you've enjoyed the practice and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Namaste.